Hi, I'm Abby from New York, and I'm a talented dancer who was forced to move to a new country. But before I continue, please hit like and subscribe. I was three when I fell in love with dance. I found a video on YouTube of dance and knew instantly that's what I wanted to do. I started twirling and singing with my red shoes and sparkling tutu dress on. Got me looking, got me looking so crazy in love. But growing up, my parents weren't big fans of my dance. When I turned six, I begged and begged my parents to let me take dance classes. What are you gonna do with dance? I'll be dancing for Beyonce. Not like when you did that embarrassing split leg shimmy shuffle thing with mommy <gasps> and you made her fall on auntie's wedding cake. No matter how much I argued, he wasn't convinced and it wasn't fair and I knew it even at the time. So I screamed until my parents reluctantly agreed. Just make it stop. So they let me take classes and of course I was right. This was my calling. I had a gift and growing up I excelled at every dance recital I was in winning every award that you could imagine. But whenever I would turn to the cheering audience, I would always notice my parents' chairs were empty in the crowd. I knew it was because my parents thought it was adorable when I was young, but soon they realized how obsessed I got the older I became. It's all I could think about, and that started to scare my parents. It'll affect your studies, and how are you gonna make any money when all you do is leap around in a room? How are you gonna meet a nice man if you spend all your time in a studio? I don't care about making money or settling down with anyone, so I was determined to prove my parents wrong. By the time I was a teenager, I had lofty goals that required my parents to shell out a lot of cash in order to let me continue taking classes in NYC. It was like I was back to being a child again, begging and begging them to help me. So we came to an agreement. We will help support you with dance classes on one condition. You must get an A on your high school diploma. Sure, I could get straight A's. I was ecstatic, but I could also prove to my parents that my passion could turn into my career. And and once I applied, I became the youngest person to be accepted into the Juilliard School of Dance. I was so excited. I ran into my parents' room that night to show them the acceptance letter. I thought they'd be happy, but all I saw were my parents' faces fall in dismay. I thought you'd be excited. Abby, your mother and I need to speak with you. What is it? We closed the laundromat today. We can't afford to keep it open with so few customers. I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. We are moving in with your grandparents. My grandparents? They're all the way in Spain. What am I gonna do in Madrid? I just got accepted into Juilliard. We can't afford it, Abby. I was devastated. What was I gonna do in Madrid when my entire life was here in New York? All that's there to remind me of my city is Starbucks and McDonald's. Ugh, I'm saying goodbye to pizza and bagels. I couldn't even look at my parents as I sat on the airplane, watching as we took off on the tarmac, waving goodbye to all my hopes and dreams in the Big Apple. When we arrived in Madrid, I ran straight into my room and slammed it shut. I burst into tears. I worked so hard, and now it's all over. Just then, I heard a knock on my door. It was my grandmother. She mischievously poked her head in to check on me. I need a few things from the grocery store down the road, and my knees are killing me. Will you go and grab me some apples and rice? The fresh air could do you some good. I grumbled, but I was never going to say no to my grandmother, and I gave her a hug on the way out. As I strolled down the street, I saw some kids playing soccer, and it was then I heard that amazing sound. Music! I turned to my right and saw a dance studio. It was such a lyrical dance. I was captivated. So much so that I didn't see heads! The soccer ball hurled in my direction, knocking me to the ground. As I opened my eyes, I saw the most beautiful man I'd ever seen in front of me. He had the dreamiest hazel eyes and perfectly coiffed hair. He started talking to me, but I could barely understand him. Am I dreaming right now? As I became more cognizant, I realized that he was speaking Spanish. Is that bien? What? Oh, English. Sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. So hot. I mean, I'm cool. I'm Javier. Cool. So, you are? Oh, Abby. He helped me up to my feet, and just then, we touched. It felt like something out of a movie. I was expecting it to start raining any second. Ugh, silly me. I quickly composed myself and started talking to mask my emotions from him. Uh, what, what type of dance was that? Flamenco. You haven't heard of it? I am not from here, but I was a dancer in New York. Was? I had to leave it all behind to move here. You should come show us what you've got. We're practicing for the biggest dance competition in Spain. For real prize money. I lit up. Earning money could be the thing that could finally prove to my parents that my dream was worth something and I could help turn our financial situation around and move us back to New York. 
Prize money? How much? 300,000 euros. Eureka. So you want to... Yes, yes, yes. I mean, sign me up. Sure, we'll sign you up. Just remember, flamenco is danced with the heart and soul. I ignored him. I don't even think I really heard his passive jab at me for being an American. I was too busy daydreaming about winning the prize money and getting back to New York. The moment I stepped into the studio, it all felt like coming home. It was so much better than my time at school, where I didn't understand anything anyone was saying to me. I felt like a loner at lunch. Javier technically attended my school, but I never saw him. And the dance studio became my saving grace. Although most didn't speak English there, dance was our common language. I quickly learned that Javier was just as talented as he was charming. His smile lit me up. He took me under his wing and taught me the art of flamenco dancing. I could feel the warmth of his arms as he held me up, and his strong muscles as he twirled me around and lifted me up into the air. I felt safe with him. Time slowed down when we danced together, and I couldn't help but feel butterflies when I looked into his eyes. With every step, every turn, and every dip, I felt like I was becoming a a better version of myself. I even made some new friends. We were all competing to decide who would become the pair to dance in the competition. One day, Javier announced that the class had voted him and me to be the pair to perform. I blushed uncontrollably. I hoped Javier didn't notice. After class, Javier pulled me aside. I was hoping that we could grab a bite to eat to discuss the details of the competition. Sure, of course. I tried to remain cool, but I've never done something like this. I mean, was it a date? He took me to a local gelateria and bought me ice cream. I couldn't help but notice how the sun touched his perfectly tanned face as he combed his hands through his dark, silky hair. I'd never even had a crush on a guy before. Javier really took me by surprise. You've really taken me by surprise. What? Was he reading my mind? I've never met anyone like you before. Someone like me? Yeah, you're so determined. Even though you didn't know a thing about flamenco, you've managed to pick it up in a matter of months. And you're better than people who have been doing it for years. Better than you? Hey, I never said that. We laughed, pausing to look in to one another's eyes. Javier hesitated for a moment. Abby, I... Yes? I'm really glad you're my partner. Me too. I smiled back at him. We were both holding back. You could cut the tension with a knife. Suddenly, a car honked and pulled up next to us, nearly rolling over my foot. It turns out it was Javier's ex-girlfriend, Gabriella. She gave me a once-over, and I knew exactly who she was. She was one of the most famous TikTok stars in all of Europe. Javier sprung up to greet her. Gabriella, what are you doing here? I made a mistake, Javier. Javi, can we talk? Javier looked back at me, and I reluctantly shrugged him off as if it was no big deal. How stupid of me to think that this beautiful Spaniard would take me seriously. I should concentrate on getting the prize money to get back to New York. Plus, I don't want to fall in love or feel love ever. Everything changed when she came back. Everyone was excited to see her and Javier together. They decided she should join our dance number so we could win the competition. And Gabriella was a force to be reckoned with. She was beautiful, talented, and you to getting what she wanted, and what she wanted was to win Javier back, and also to make my days a living nightmare. Gabriella pulled me aside when no one was looking. Abby, I see you're hanging around Javier a lot lately, trying to steal him away from me. What? No, of course not. We're just partners. Uh-huh, sure. And I'm just here to watch paint dry. Look, Gabriella, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not interested in Javier that way. Really? Then why does your face color change like you're caught in the act? Uh-huh, I guess I should go now. I'm too busy. Okay, fine. Maybe I did like Javier a little bit. Mm -mm. Actually, more. One day, everyone was practicing in the studio, and Gabriella pretended to trip and fall. Javier came to her aid. She faked an ankle injury so that she could wrap her arms around his neck as he picked her up and brought her to the chair. As he did, she stared daggers at me. I couldn't help but feel jealousy bubble up inside me. When Javier sat her down, she whispered loud enough so that I could hear too. I miss you, Javi. I miss you, too taking care of me like this? You clearly faked that. Everyone can see that you're lying. Gabriella is hurt, Abby. Why would you say that? That night, I sadly watched Javier take Gabriella home. I stormed back inside my house and slammed the door shut. My parents' hearts nearly leapt out of their chest. Careful, we don't want to give your grandma a heart attack. Or me, for that matter. I ran into my room and shoved my head into my pillow. I knew this wasn't going to be the end of it. They were officially back together. She was not only a distraction for Javier, Javier, but they became a distraction for me. I couldn't escape them. I finally started to see Javier at school because he would meet up with Gabriella in the quad at lunch. I had to watch as everyone fawned over her. She didn't even go to our school. The principal should kick her out. But of course, they didn't. She was a celebrity after all. Ugh. 
I was so irritated, I rushed to the closest door I could find, the janitor's closet, to get some space. I shut the door and stood there, taking deep breaths. Then I heard, Abby, is that you? Can you come out, please? Sorry if I was harsh on you the other night. Gabriella admitted she tripped to get my attention. You were right. Are you mad at her? Nah, I think what she did was endearing. She never used to go out of her way to pay attention to me. Something changed in her when she came back to Spain after her tour. Yeah, it was me. She's doing all of this to get back at me out of spite. You want to practice our routine after school? That night, Javier opened his door all distraught. Him and Gabriella had gotten into a fight over me coming over. Then his phone lit up. Gabriella was calling him. He ignored it. Are you sure you don't want to get that? She can wait. I'm busy, and she's probably trying to see if we're together. I don't understand why she's being like this. Anyway, shall we? He pulled me closer, and we started to dance. When we stopped dancing, our faces were inches away from each other. I wanted to kiss him so bad, but instead, I pulled away from him. We can't. You're with Gabriella now. You're right. I'm sorry. But despite our best efforts to keep the peace, Gabriella had been outside watching. Her eyes flamed with intense rage. She nearly broke down the door, demanding answers from Javier. What is she doing here, alone with you? We're not children, Gabriella. I'm just gonna let myself out. Let me walk you out. What part of Javier and I are dating do you not understand? Why are you so threatened by me? <laughs> threatened? All right, fine. You wanna play? Let's play. She stormed away from me as I braced for further impact, but I too was fuming. I hated that I was caught in the middle of a love triangle I never asked for. She saw me as a threat, and she made sure to let me know it. She even kissed Javier in front of me to get under my skin. Our whole studio went out dancing at a nightclub to celebrate our hard work. Javier and I started to dance on the dance floor together. Gabriella yanked him off the floor and told him, either you replace Abby with another dancer, or we end things right now. Don't be ridiculous, Gabriella. Ridiculous? You two clearly have something going on. Gabriella stormed off, leaving Javier quiet, contemplating his next move. I looked at him, having watched it all go down, hurt that he would even consider it. He didn't even try to stick up for me. I felt like I was a pawn in his game. He wouldn't even look me in the eye. I ran out of the club. I couldn't breathe. When I got home that night, my parents were waiting for me. You're home late. We never saw you in New York, and now we never see you here. What am I supposed to say? Say you're sorry, and that you'll spend more time with your grandparents. Nothing I do will ever be good enough for you, will it? I'm busting my butt so I can win money for our family, and all you can do is criticize me. I left my parents speechless. I felt like I was losing control of everything I cared about. My parents, my dancing, my relationship with Javier, but I refused to give up without a fight. The day of the big dance competition finally arrived. I was looking for Javier, but he was nowhere to be found, and we were up next. I saw one of my friends shuffle panicked past me. Where is Javier? Then Esteban, one of the other dancers in the studio, walked up to me. I'm replacing Javier. I'm your partner now. I know all of the moves, and he didn't want to hurt you, so he took himself out of the race instead. This jerk knows how important today is for me. He knows that I need the prize money, and instead, he leaves me high and dry for Gabriella? I'll do anything to win this competition, even if it means I have to go out on that stage alone. Esteban, I've got this. I'm gonna perform alone. You sure? I walked out on stage. Javier was nowhere to be seen in the crowd. The music came on, and I started to come alive, leaping across the stage effortlessly. But as soon as I landed, one of my heels snapped, and I realized someone had purposefully messed with my heel. Gabriella was smiling wickedly at me from backstage, and then I realized it was her. Then I saw my parents backstage, signaling for me to come to them. I ran to them, deeply embarrassed. My mom pulled me into a hug, and I held back tears. Nothing was going the way that I wanted it to. Mom? Dad? You came? We wouldn't miss it for the world. My mom wiped the tears from my face. I instantly felt the warmth of my parents' love. I was so appreciative and happy that they were here for me. My heels, they're nothing we can't fix. When you first started dancing, your mom and I were a bit skeptical. We were worried about your future and wanted you to have a stable career. But what we failed to see was the joy that dance brought into your life and the talent that you possess. We don't want you to have to worry about money. So go out there and enjoy yourself. We're so proud of you, Abby. That was the confidence boost I needed. I waltzed back on stage and as I finished my dance, the audience erupted into applause. I looked around and saw smiles on my friends' faces, but a shock on Gabriella's face as she fumed backstage. When I exited the stage, I found Javier waiting backstage for me. Before he could even open his mouth, I began to spew. Javier, don't even try to talk to me. Wait, Abby, just hear me out. 
You think saying sorry is gonna make this all go away? Abby, please give me a chance. You wanna make it right? You had one job, to show up and dance with me. But instead, you chose to play your little games with Gabriella. Well, congratulations, you got what you wanted. You made me look like a fool in front of everyone. I told Gabriella that I wasn't going to swap you out for another dancer, so she deceptively locked me in a closet until the performance was over. I have spent the past few hours trying to break the lock so that I could get to you. I am so sorry, and I let you down. She locked you in a closet? What about Esteban? That was Gabriella. I didn't tell Esteban anything. I wanted to be up on that stage with you. I am so sorry. Gabriella and I are done now. It's over between us. I realized something today. I don't want to be with anyone else. I only want you. Do you forgive me? Before I could say anything, there was an announcement for the winner. It wasn't me, since I was disqualified when I decided to do a solo performance. Dad, I... I lost them. You don't need to worry about the money, honey. Spain is a humbling life away from the fast-paced bustle of New York. We're happy here. We just hope you are too. Yeah, I am. I got to know that dance is something I can do anywhere, not just in New York. This whole experience changed me. I was a different person. I didn't want the same things. And that's when I realized Juilliard was one opportunity, but not the only opportunity. I want to stay here, in Spain, with you. I love you, Abby. I love you too, Javier. Next Next year, that prize will be ours, and we'll open a better dance school that rivals Juilliard. He pulled me in for a kiss, and it was at that moment that I knew everything, no matter what obstacle was thrown my way, would be okay.